Hi and welcome back to the channel, and today we have a Volkswagen EOS complete with brown packing tape on the side of the car because the window had become stuck down and somebody had put or taped up a plastic bag over it. That's been fixed now, it's a window regulator issue which has been rectified, and we can see with the roof down that this vehicle's pretty grubby inside, it's just pretty weathered, seats have got some stains on them, and the centre console is pretty disgusting. So as per usual, we're on a tight budget and a tight time schedule. So we're gonna do everything we can in one day to get this vehicle prepped up and ready for sale. So as per usual, we're going to be using some Kosh Chemi Green Star all-purpose cleaner. I'm going to spray that on the engine bay at 10 to 1 dilution ratio. A series of little brushes to scrub and agitate the surface, and then we're going to blast that off with the jet wash. And something a little bit different this week, we're going to be using some Car Pro Pearl to dress the engine bay. I usually use one of three products. It'll be either Auto Glim uh, Super Sheen, uh, Car Pro Pearl or Kosh Kami Motor Plus. So I thought I'd just go for something a little bit different this week. And the Car Pro Pearl is diluted down water at one to three. And it's pretty effective at that, you get a nice finish. Uh, we'll see later on the video as well. I use that for dressing the plastic wheel arch liners as well. So we can use the same Kosh Kami Green Star all-purpose cleaner on the wheel arch liner and then the wheel and the tyre. Used a soft Ficam brush here just to scrub the tyre and then we use an EZ wheel brush or EZ and um, give that plastic wheel arch liner a good scrub inside there. I'm going to jet wash all that off. Then I'm going to use a stronger alkaline wheel cleaner which is very good at getting brake dust and things off the wheels. A uh, similar product would be something uh, like PNS uh, brake buster, that's quite good. I'll show that in upcoming videos as well. And that's just going to leave the wheels looking nice and clean again and remove that. They're going to need a little bit of touching in because there's a bit of minor curbing. We can do that later on in the video.
So with the car all washed off, it's now inside and put the roof down. I always think the engineering behind those sort of folding roofs is incredible. I'm going to remove the seats out of this one because the centre console was pretty disgusting and I wanted to make sure there wasn't too much gunk underneath the seats and secondly check for water leaks because convertibles can leak. This one's pretty good, it was dry, there's a bit of loose change there and some plastic Tesco's, which is a supermarket in the UK, tokens. Um, so it's just a case of removing all the dust and debris. Um, I've got a little attachment on the uh, pneumatic hoover or vacuum cleaner and it's pretty effective as we can see, it just sort of scrubs away at that plastic and gets all that dust off there. So around the dashboard and the centre console, I'm just using this soft uh, little bristle brush here just to sort of loosen off any of the crumbs and bits of dust and things like that. Then we're going to use this foam cleaner. A number of companies do them, uh, Autoclean do one as well. It's quite good, it's sort of similar stuff you would use on a computer keyboard, so it's safe on electronics. Um, it's got a little bit of cleaning power in there and it's just very good. If you don't want to get an area too wet basically, you can use this sort of stuff and it does have some decent cleaning properties and will loosen off junk off the surface. Once we've got most of the dust and junk off the surface, I've then gone over with some Koshkami Green Star again. You see this product can be used on a multitude of different things. Um, same sort of dilution. Sometimes on the cars, on the engine bays and stuff, are you gonna be five to one if you really sort of get some really greasy, horrible stuff off. 10 to one inside the car is pretty strong enough for what you need. Agitate that with a slightly stiffer brush. Um, and then what I've done is just gone over with a damp microfiber to wipe that off. Then I'll introduce an airline just to sort of blow the uh, surface area off and dry it off. And secondly, it's gonna get any sort of really stubborn ingrained stuff around the switch gear and also around like that chrome bezel housing around the gear stick. So with the interior all cleaned up, we can now look to do something with the seats. Um, one of the bonuses about taking the seats out of this vehicle is that the runners were pretty disgusting, quite a lot of congealed junk in there, years worth of dust and grime. So being able to give those a scrub with a brush and then getting the airline really in between the mechanism was gonna do a number of things. It was gonna clean all the garbage and junk out of there, but also get those seat runners you know, operating correctly again because they're not foul with bits of crisp and, you know, jelly beans and things like that, and other sweeties that have been stuffed in there over the years. Then onto the seats. One of the interesting things I found with these was that um, although they were stained, I was, to be quite honest, expecting to get a lot more dirt and filth out of them, but as we were about to see on camera, 
with the uh, wet vac extraction system, it wasn't really that bad. I mean, they were grubby, but they it's mostly just literally water stains on the surface. So although it definitely needed doing, it wasn't as bad as I thought initially it could have been. So once the seats are thoroughly clean, we can dump all the water out. So the first bucket's what we've got off all the plastics inside the car, and the second one's what we extracted from the seats and the carpet. So it was worthwhile doing, as we can see there's a decent amount of sort of dirt, etc. but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Next, we're gonna use some interior dressing. For this, I've gone for Kosh Kami uh, Trim Star. It's really good, value for money. Used a little microfiber applicator here just to sort of apply it. Then use another one just to sort of take off any residue and just leave a nice sort of satin finish on the surface of the plastics. Once that's done, uh, I can look to put the roof back up and then we'll look to do the paintwork on the vehicle. So now comes the task of removing all the tape. So simple thing here, just using a fingernail to lift the edge of what remaining tape there is off. Uh, the glue residue afterwards came off very easily with some uh, generic tar and glue remover. I do find them a much for muchness. Although saying that, I have been using some of the uh, G-Technic tar and glue remover and that seems to be extremely good. It's a lot stronger than other products, but it's, it does smell quite bad. You need to use it in a well, you know, very well ventilated area. Once that's done, um, we'll go over the car with a clay bar just to remove any overspray or any bonding contaminants on the surface of the paint. And then I'll look to give it a quick machine polish. Silver is one of those colours. It's going to you know, benefit from a machine polish if it hasn't been done for years and you will brighten the paint, paint work and get a, a better shine on it. But it never really shows um, the gloss levels like something like a dark navy blue car or a black car, for example. So it's very good to keep clean and it's one of the... Uh, probably better colors to hide sort of surface scratches, etc. I should know because I drive a silver Volvo, um, but it's potentially a little bit less rewarding to machine polish uh, and to clean up because uh, you know the visual difference before and after is not as great as it can be on some other cars. So for this car, I've gone with Rupes Uno Protect. It's a really good product because it's gonna cut the paintwork a little bit, remove some of the defects but it's also a polish and seal and all in one. So you just literally leave it for about half an hour after you've buffed the vehicle, wipe it off and it comes off very easily and that's it, you're done. So it's a quick and easy product. And here I'm just using some BMW Titan Silver paint. I find this is a really good match for most alloy wheels. Just gonna to touch in the curbing, just take your eye off it. I'll then use the Car Pro Pearl, which we used on the engine bay earlier to dress the plastic wheel arch liners and put some tire dressing on it. Then I'll clean the glass and we're done.
So overall, we've got a pretty good before and after here. And this is a nice real world representation of what will come through the used car network on a daily basis and what's expected of me and what you can achieve in one day. There's some different and interesting vehicles coming up. I've got a Renault Kangoo, which has belonged to my builder friends that's done about, I think 163,000 miles. It's an older one as well. So we're gonna be preparing that for a new driver that's gonna be joining his, his team and staff. I've also got a, uh, a Golf that's been sat around for quite some time as well. It's a newer one. I think it's a Mark 7 off the top of my head. It's white, um, just come out of the mechanics. So that's gonna be interesting as well. So if you haven't subscribed, please think about doing so. As always, thank you very much for watching the video and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.